What is up, crypto fam? Today we are talking about Brave Browser, the browser behind Basic Attention Token, one of my favorite projects, and they just crossed the 4 million active user mark. So today I wanted to do a review of the browser and tell you why it is my favorite web browser of 2018. Let's hash it out. Guys, as you can tell by my voice, it's really nasally because allergy season has arrived and it hit me like a pillowcase filled with bars of soap. So I do apologize for that. Now guys, to start things off, I wanna congratulate the Brave and Basic Attention Token team for finally reaching the 4 million active users mark. This is huge and I know that Google Chrome has a billion active users, but think about the head start Google has. They have years and years of experience in this space and years and years of users on their platform. So the fact that Brave has built this from scratch and has 4 million active users for a brand new product is huge and I'm super, super pumped for what's ahead. I recommend that you go ahead and download Brave Browser, give it a shot. There's a link in the description below. Brave Browser is a competitor to Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and yes, Microsoft Edge, but it's not really even a competition when you talk about Microsoft Edge. However, that's besides the point. Brave Browser is an ad blocking privacy browser that helps protect you from the trackers, the cookies, the all the bad stuff about the internet that we've grown accustomed to and almost grown to expect. We expect to be tracked. We expect to see hundreds of ads every single day. And Brave Browser is there to sort of break that mold and change the way that we interact with the internet in a better way. So Brave Browser has Tor privacy browsing, so anonymous browsing built in so that you are not going to be tracked. Your data is not going to be exposed. It blocks ads up front from scratch with no questions asked. And if you wanted to view ads to earn basic attention tokens, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on, you can definitely do that. So you can see here, show brave ads. Good, you're good to go. You can go ahead and allow all cookies. You can block everything. You can block only certain cookies. You can do all sorts of different things and you can protect yourself the way that you want. The key to Brave Browser is this. A lot of people think that Brave Browser is all about just privacy browsing and that's it. Blocking ads and all that stuff. It isn't. The whole concept of Brave Browser is to make your browsing experience the way you want it. So when you download Brave, you can customize everything. If you wanna block ads, you block ads. If you wanna view ads, you can view them. If you wanna block all script, but you wanna keep cookies, you can do anything that you want on this browser. So that's the whole concept. You can do what you want, and you're not forced to do something you don't want to do. Brave is the brainchild of two pretty important people. One of them is Brendan Eich, the creator of JavaScript, pretty much the father of modern internet, if you really think about it, because JavaScript is used everywhere. And then also one of the co-founders of Mozilla Firefox, Firefox being a browser that's used by a whole lot of people as well. So the fact that Brave Browser has this pedigree and has this backing is definitely encouraging. And these folks have experience creating a successful product and an important product. So I do believe that they will be very instrumental in the success of Brave and Basic Attention Token moving forward. Now you can see here on the homepage, it says, you are not a product. And honestly, Brave is looking to break from the mold that Chrome and other browsers have created, and that is by using your data as a product and giving you no control over what data you share and what data you don't share, giving you no choice about whether or not you wanna watch ads or not watch ads, and giving you very little control or way to protect yourself from all of the vicious things that happen on the internet in terms of malicious code other viruses, etc. Brave is here to fix that problem. Now, if you guys have seen my video about basic attention token, Brave is the browser that enables basic attention token to do what it does. If you wanna learn more about basic attention token, check the linked video above in the YouTube card, but I'll just give you a high level synopsis here. Now, what basic attention token is looking to do is revolutionize the way we pay for content and the whole sort of triangular structure of content creation works. Now right now, in the current state of things, you go online and you have no choice but to view ads when you're watching a YouTube video or when you're on Facebook. You see these ads almost like they're a part of the content. Now there are many problems with the way that the system works today. First and foremost, 
you as the consumer don't get to choose what ads you view or when you view them. The advertisers often don't get the best bang for their buck because people skip these annoying ads because they don't want to see them. And content creators don't get enough of a cut when they're just trying to create content and make a living. So how can we fix that? Basic Attention Token is looking to do that. In this case, if you use Brave Browser, you can get paid in Basic Attention Tokens to view ads. So if you go up here to this little tab up here where the lion's head is, you can choose to show Brave ads. And what this is, is it's opting in to view ads approved by the Brave Browser, and that you get paid in Basic Attention Tokens for watching. When you get paid in basic attention tokens, you can use those tokens to either cash out and make money, or you can use them to buy paywalled content or contribute to the creators that you really love. So for me, I love this idea because I don't want my viewers to have to watch annoying ads to get to my content, but I do wanna make a living with my content at some point, so I would love to be able to be contributed to in basic attention tokens for those who love my content. So now that we've talked about basic attention token and its integration into this browser itself, let's talk a little bit about some of the features that make Brave so special. Brave, as you can see here, has something called shields. But what happens is Brave by default blocks ads and blocks trackers. So almost all websites establish trackers or cookies, things to determine whether or not you've been there already before. And a common example is when booking airline tickets. When you book an airline ticket, when you first visit the website, they give you a certain price. If you don't buy at that certain time, when you come back next time, the ticket prices will have changed because they've tracked that you've already looked at these tickets and you've determined that you maybe don't wanna buy. So they can change the price to either charge you more or charge you less, all to make more money on their website. But when you do this on Brave Browser, there is no way for them to track that you've been there unless you physically allow them to do so. So a lot of people are using Brave for this very purpose to go ahead and buy airline tickets for better prices. So you can see here on my homepage, just in a day of use, it's already blocked 77 trackers, 412 ads, and it's already added an extra layer of security to a few different sites. Now. Honestly, this is huge because a lot of people don't even realize how much ads permeate their life, especially while they're browsing the internet. Now, the other thing is, is that on Google Chrome, everything you do is tracked. And look, I understand that the experience of using Chrome is great for people who are very much integrated into the Google ecosystem. Like myself, I'm on YouTube. It's super easy for me to use Chrome because I'm logged in all over the place across every website super easily. But I've really come to love the privacy that comes with using Brave Browser, and I'm a huge fan of the basic attention token concept. And I've started using Brave Browser as my main daily browser. I only use Chrome for things that I need it for. And I think you as a creator or you as a consumer of content should also consider using Brave Browser. Now, there are a couple of things that I don't like about Brave Browser that I hope they will improve in the future. One of those is that as a developer, there aren't really any powerful developer tools in Brave Browser. And coming from Google Chrome, that's something that I really miss because I really love the rich suite of developer tools in Google Chrome. And I also, I do miss the syncing across different accounts. You know, I miss having my Google account just logged in and ready to go when I'm jumping between tabs, jumping between services, and also just between my devices. I know that Brave is working on syncing Brave browser between the mobile apps and the desktop, which is great. Um, but obviously in the future, I hope they'll integrate with some other ecosystems as well. So as you can see here, I've got eight tabs open on Google Chrome, and I also have eight tabs open on Brave browser. So let's go ahead and open up the task manager. And as you'll see here, there's the comparison of the current memory and CPU usage. It's about a gig of RAM for Google Chrome and about 800 megabytes of RAM for Brave browser. So Brave is getting a little bit of help from the GPU. So that helps cut down the RAM usage and CPU usage up front for some of these different animations and such, which Google Chrome does not use. So as you can see, Google Chrome, which is notorious for its RAM usage and sometimes its CPU usage, 
is definitely losing out to Brave in this instance. Early on in Brave's development, there was a lot of memory leakage and there were a lot of problems with memory, but it seems to be solved here and performance will continue to improve as time goes on. Remember, Brave Browser is a work in progress. It's still open source. It's still brand new relative to Google Chrome. So there's a ways to go.